Tonight, two investigates the handling of a tragedy at a Bay Area hospital. Avoidable or not, a mother and father who lost their little girl say it's what happened after her death that has continued to torment them. K2's Eric Rasmussen is here now with the changes that family is pushing for. Eric? Julie, ever since Morgan Westhoff died from complications following a heart procedure at Children's Hospital in Oakland, her parents say they've struggled to get information about what exactly went wrong. They say the communication they did receive from the hospital asking for donations was inexcusable. <laughs> Hunter Westhoff is an identical twin, but strangers wouldn't know. Her sister Morgan was gone before her second birthday. I miss her every day. She, she is uh, the angel that watches over us. Born premature, both girls had the same heart problem, patent ductus arteriosus, or PDA. I want to spin. You want to spin? After Hunter had a successful procedure at Children's Hospital in Oakland, Morgan and the Westhoffs returned two months later for the same thing, giving her purple teddy bear oxygen. This is the last picture the Westhoffs have of their little girl. The cardiologist came to us racing and said, we got a problem. A device that had just been placed in Morgan's heart dislodged shortly after the Westhoffs say their daughter began choking on liquid given to her by a nurse turns her over on her stomach and starts whacking her on the back. While doctors tried to retrieve the device, the Westhoffs say Morgan's heart stopped for two to three minutes. Hours later, a doctor delivered the devastating news to parents Wade and Jennifer. We've been unable to detect any brain function. And I immediately screamed and said our daughter is brain dead. And I just I couldn't believe that. I had to let her go. The Westhoffs have notified the hospital they plan to sue. They say what happened a few weeks after Morgan's death has added to their suffering. It's unspeakable. I, I don't know how, what you can say. In the mail, a letter from Children's Hospital and a survey for which the Westhoffs were randomly selected. Soon after that, a second letter from Children's thanking the family for a recent $1,900 donation and a request for more money to continue the hospital's life-saving work. Then another request to send a donation of $100 or more. That letter, dated January 18th, 2013, the day Morgan died at Children's Hospital. I... It felt like it was a slap in the face. The Westhoffs pleaded for the mail to stop, but it did not. In September, another fundraising letter asking for a donation of $2,118. Last week, an email to participate in a short survey. Even an invitation to an exclusive preview of the hospital's largest fundraiser. After a death at the hospital, why would a family continue to receive mail asking for donations? Um, straight out mistake. David Durand is the chief medical officer at Children's Hospital Oakland. He said patient privacy laws prevent him from speaking specifically about Morgan's case, but in a statement, Children said it deeply regrets that donation solicitations were sent to the Westhoffs. We have hundreds of thousands of communications with families and staff every year, and um, I'd like to say we're perfect at it, but we're not. We make mistakes and uh, things happen and we're aggressively looking at how we can improve those things. In many organizations with one click of a button, all the, all the form letters, all the mail, uh, including uh, billings, collections, uh, fundraising, surveys, all that comes to a halt. Doug Wojcicki is the founder of hospital consulting firm Sorry Works. Two investigates found there's a nationwide push toward more transparency. An approach known as the Seven Pillars at the University of Illinois Medical Center in Chicago focuses on identifying, investigating, and reporting medical errors. The University of Michigan Health System has found its communication and resolution program has really reduced lawsuits and liability costs. It's a culture change. Uh, they've done the exact opposite for so long, so we've got a lot of teaching and training and hand-holding to get them to, to where they need to be. At the Westhoff's home in Danville, there are still two cribs and occasional reminders their daughter, Hunter, doesn't completely understand what happened to her twin. She would look in the mirror at a reflection and reach out thinking it was her sister, and it wasn't. 
Children's Hospital now says it's looking at ways to improve communication with families after traumatic events. The Westhoffs hope that change is eventually part of Morgan's legacy. Officials at Children's say they are part of a hospital engagement network and they're dedicating a week in May to improving communication with families after unexpected events and errors. If you have a tip for Two Investigates, we want to hear from you. You can email twoinvestigates at ktvu.com.